Welcome everyone, Schneems here. We talked about Rails being an MVC framework, and we've also covered almost all of the different parts of that framework, or MVCR. So we, we've got models, views, and we also talked about routes last time, but we haven't really gotten into controllers. So this week we are talking heavily about what exactly are Rails controllers. So, a brief definition I came up with, uh, Rails controllers specify the views we see, where we go, and what data is available. So as we are thinking about them, I like to just mentally picture that uh, Rails controllers are kind of like an air traffic controller, or maybe any kind of a traffic controller. So they, they basically direct the flow of our user experience as they're visiting the website. Um, also wanted to mention that there is quite a bit of uh, slide material, quite a bit of lecture material in this course, in today's lecture, and uh, just try to recognize, you don't necessarily have to understand 100% of everything, we are going to be uh, covering all of the different options pretty much in depth inside of our exercise. Also, if you're not doing the exercises, you're really missing out. Okay. Uh, so last week we talked about our config routes and we showed how the uh, route on the left maps to a controller in action. And then in our exercise, we went on to see that uh, in, if you open up that products controller, then we it was blank. Uh, we didn't put anything in there. We didn't need to. And instead, we put all of our code inside of our view. So here's an example of our index view in the products controller. Uh, so here we have all of our code. Uh, so why did we leave the controller blank? So first of all, it's kind of easier when you're getting started to have all of your code just in one file. It makes a little bit more sense. It's a little easier to debug. As we move on, things can get a little bit cluttered, and um, especially as you are looking for performance degradation, it's easy to have. It's nice to if you put all of your code that is looking up and doing SQL queries inside of your controller, and you can see all of them right there. We're also going to see later on how we can use some of the uh, render, redirect, uh, filter functionality of a controller to use that information uh, that we wouldn't be able to if we just left all of that inside of a view. So let's, uh, let's take a look and see what we can do to make our controller do work. Uh, we are going to be moving SQL from the view to the controller. Again, this is going to help keep our views a little bit cleaner. In, in general, views tend to be or can be sort of a, a dumping ground for just lots and lots of code. And uh, so far, your views have been relatively simple, but I've seen view files, you know, three, four hundred lines long. And uh, trust me, in those scenarios, if you can, if you can be a little bit cleaner, if you can not get to that point, then it's going to make your life much, much easier. Uh, so the first thing we are going to want to do to move things from our view to our controller is we're going to want to define methods. Here we have an index method, and notice that the name index also matches with our view, so it's index.html. Then if we take a look inside of that index.html, we can pick out the lines that are calling SQL. So we have product.includes, user, and then we're calling .all on that. And this is actually going to fire off a SQL statement. We saw we could look in the logs and double check that. Um, and then we are going to actually assign that to a variable called products and then use that variable called products. So we are going to need to modify these two lines. So we're, we're going to want to pull out the SQL statement and put it in the controller and then use that back in the view. So we're going to move this to the controller. Uh, first step would just be copying the contents of that ERB wholesale and just putting it in the controller. And notice that we are still in our index action uh, because we are working with the index view. So we talked about scope in that last video. If you missed that, you might want to jump on over to it. Uh, Rails uses a, uh, a convention that says that um, local variables in your controller are not available to your view. And this is, again, a way to help keep things a little bit cleaner. When you do want a variable to be accessible by your view, you need to change it to an instance variable. So we're going to put an at in front of that products, changing it to an instance variable. We then want to go back to our view and use it. So notice we took out that SQL line, um, and then we changed our local variable products to an at product. So here we are using that instance variable. And essentially what we've done 
is take out our SQL statement from our view and put it into our controller. Again, this is gonna, gonna help things uh, stay a little bit cleaner in the long run. You're gonna have some experience and some practice with this. Don't worry if you're a little bit confused. Uh, the exercise, we will be doing uh, something very similar and as I mentioned, as you're prototyping, if you if you don't understand um, what SQL statements you're gonna you're gonna be needing, you can certainly, uh, as you're just getting started, do all of your prototyping in the view. But uh, once you get things actually working, and once uh, once you notice you're you're working with the data from your SQL uh, queries, then you want to move that into a controller. Uh, so that is a you know a much cleaner view, and in general, SQL doesn't belong in the view. If you're coming from a from a, a PHP background, uh, you put all your SQLs in all, all your SQL statements in views, and you know generally sometimes don't even use an ORM. So this might come as a bit of a shock, but uh, trust me, we're going to see even a little bit later some some benefits that we can get from moving those statements to our controllers. Uh, also. Just by the, the the nature and the name, the separation of MVC, uh, views are for viewing and displaying data, um, not for querying the database. Okay. So that is a pretty good place to uh, kind of have a quick break. Um, go on to the next video, and we are going to talk about the additional capabilities of a controller besides storing SQL. Uh, so controllers can render, redirect, filter, and format. Keep on watching to the next video.